Good evening, everybody. It is 7-12 here in Florida and blessings. Okay, you guys, I just want to share this, uh, what Kimmy had sent me uh, this morning or this afternoon, actually. And um, will I find it? Wow, I am just, the Lord is so good, y'all. He lets us know what's going on. He really does. I want to share this with you because she said something at the very end of this about the Lord gave her something about the weather. And um, like I said, my head's not working real great right now. But uh, we're going to listen. And I'm going to play this. And this is just amazing. Here we go. Love you, Kim. Oh, before I start, y'all, I'm going to be taking off like at least four to five days so I can get my head cleared, okay? I'm having too much chemical sensitivities for a lot of different reasons. But anyways, just know I love you and I'll be back. Here we go. Hey, brothers and sisters. Today is February 26th, 2023. Just wanted to share something with you guys. Um, so this morning, I had this dream. And in the dream, I heard these words. I heard, roundworm story in news is lies. Mm -hmm. So I just, I just put in um, roundworm news. And this article came up from a few days ago, February 22nd, 2023. Bioluminescence may shine light on roundworm secrets. I'm just I'm going to read this to you guys. Even though roundworms are nearly too small to be seen, they can pose major problems in corn, soybean, peanut, and other crops. Collectively, these roundworms are known as plant parasitic nematodes, and they cause $173 billion in crop losses worldwide each year. These losses to crop yield and quality can occur even though chemical controls, resistant cultivars, and other methods are available to farmers. So a team of Agricultural Research Service and university scientists decided to take a deeper dive into the basic biology of these nematodes and, more specifically, their genes for, re for reproducing. But the further nature of these millimeter-long pests and peculiar peculiarities of their life cycle evaded the latest high-tech tools that the scientists had hoped to study them with. Fortunately, they found a workaround in the form of electroporation. In short, the technique involves immersing nematodes in a plexiglass chamber with a buffer solution and pulsing it with small jolts of electricity. This stuns the creatures and temporarily opens pores in their bodies through which the solution's chief active ingredient can enter. Namely, bits of genetic material called, and I'm not going to say this out loud. And I hope you guys are seeing this. I've done many videos on this uh, stuff. Is an enzyme that oxidizes a compound called producing a type of light called bioluminescence, mm -hmm. such as that that and emitted by fireflies. In this instance, scientists retooled coding sequence taken from a bioluminescent deep sea shrimp and electroporated it until the neme into the nematodes. Nematodes have primitive nervous systems. When they were electroporated, they were immobilized for up to an hour, but then recovered and behaved normally. Scientists then harvested the nematodes so that the contents of their cells, including, could be blended into a mixture called a homogenate. Next, they mix the homogenate with a, like, chemical called furomazine and presto bioluminescence achieved. Rather than observe this with the naked eye, the scientists use biochemical assays and sensitive light detecting equipment to gauge the strength of the homogenates bioluminescence and determine how well their experiments had worked. So far, the researchers have successfully electro electroporated this into the likes of soybean, cis nematodes, and root knot nematodes, both, both costly crop pests. Another plant pathologist 
on the research team, the approach opens the door to introducing other synthetic into nematodes to reveal how they change and where, as well as when the nematode's own genes are activated in cells. There may be pest control applications as well. For example, electroporation could offer a way to rear laboratory colonies of soybean cyst nematodes that carry pieces of genetic code whose sole purpose is to skew the ratio of male to female offspring. In theory, releasing these lab-reared nematodes to mate with those in the wild would eventually cause a generational population crash. That's what they're saying, okay? We, hypothes we hypothesized that if we could interfere with the sex determination in nematodes, we could reduce nematode populations below crop damaging thresholds. That, in turn, could diminish the need for chemical controls or help prolong the effectiveness of elite resistant cultivars favored by growers, among other potential benefits. So that's what they're saying in this article this news article and here's the kicker y'all sorry but my dog I was told the roundworm <laughs> story in the news is lies mm -hmm. amen see they're telling you in this article that they're going to try to to start doing this to control you know how many of these things are eating crops mm -hmm. with this substance that I can't say but what I think they're actually doing is they're going to be putting it in our food, in the crops. Mm -hmm. By way of the weather. Mm -hmm. And then I also heard, upon awakening, I heard NWS. There you go. And I wasn't sure what that was, so I just Googled NWS, and it just kept coming up as the National Weather Service. And I wasn't aware of any storms coming. I haven't been watching the weather at all. But apparently there's two um, big storms coming um, with potential strong tornadoes and such. And then a, a sister in Christ also commented that she lives not far from where their headquarters is, which is someplace in Oklahoma, which I just found out is going to be one of the main areas that maybe get hit pretty bad with these storms that are coming so okay so right here she says he gave her father gave her nws which is i believe the national uh, weather service i believe that's what he was talking about is that how, that's how they're going to spread it across all these crops is through the weather Mm -hmm. anyways god bless all of you thank you my sweet little sister kimmy i'm going to play the rest of this because she's preaching out the gospel here and i love it i think so anyway i'm not sure why the lord told me this but other than you know head, a heads up kind of thing so if you guys could pray for any place that's going to be hit by these storms that would be great I just wanted to share this with you guys to kind of give you a heads up about stuff. And, you know, we may not be here when they start doing what they were not admitting to doing. But um, I think we're going to be going home real soon, you guys. But, Me too. You know, the Lord wants the truth to be known about things that they do in the dark. And well, it may just be for those that are left behind. Well, the Holy Spirit always at work, always present, very present, very, very present. He's always working in us and through us. And, um, yeah, he never stops. He is the spirit of truth, and he's going to tell us anything and everything. Well, if we're just listening and um, if we ask and we pray, and uh, sometimes we don't have that type of gifting, but you have other giftings, and love is the biggest of all. Let's listen to the gospel, y'all. Uh just keep looking at Jesus, you guys, because he's going to come just in time. That I know. Amen. You haven't believed in Jesus for your salvation. Do it now. Yes. Time is very, very short. 
For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. That's right. All you have to do is believe like a child. Amen. Children just trust and they believe. That's, right. That's why Jesus emphasized children so much in the, in the word. Unless you become like one of these little ones, surely I tell you, you will not enter the kingdom. Amen. Believe in Jesus. Trust him. Jesus died in your place Amen. for your salvation and the remission of your sins, for your justification. Just believe. It's not about you. That's right. It's not about what you do to keep your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. It's eternal. It's a gift from God. Can't earn it. Can't earn it. Right. And no one can take it away. Thank you, Jesus. Just believe. Thank you, Jesus. All right, you guys, I love you. Hold fast. I love you too, honey. Oh, my goodness, y'all. It's so close. It's the Holy Spirit speaking in real time. Real time. Uh, amazing. She had that last night, and this is what she found. Uh, and I do think it's going to be spread by, by weather. I really do. That's one way they're going to do it. But anyways, I just wanted to share this with you. God bless all of you. I love you, Kimmy Rude. And uh, y'all have a beautiful and blessed day in our Lord. And keep looking up because we're almost there.